Once we realize that feeling down or experiencing a mental health issue is common and a normal human experience, there isn't really a bad time to talk. Bringing in support and having a chat is a logical and healthy thing to do. We may never feel ready to talk because it's inherently scary to be vulnerable. But just because we feel fear doesn't mean it's wrong or unachievable. Without fear, bravery wouldn't exist. We can do hard things. Don't let the concern of not knowing what to say stop you from reaching out. You don't need to be fully scripted and have everything ready that you want to say. In fact, one of the most useful parts of talking it out with someone is to help make sense of things and understand how you feel during the process. We will help you have some key things to say, but otherwise, let the rest emerge as it needs to. There are four really important times to reach out. One, when it's affecting our day-to-day -day happiness. If our quality of living has reduced to a point where we're not coping, it's time to reach out for help. There is no point suffering unnecessarily, carrying the load on our own. We can give ourselves the opportunity to move beyond surviving and move into thriving. It may be a process, but it's worth the time and investment of energy. Two, when it's affecting our relationships. When it's likely that people have noticed we're a bit off, that's a good time to open up, especially if it's affecting the key relationships in a negative way. For example, that we're pulling away and seeing people less often, or we're more argumentative. Odds are, they'll want to know what's happening for us. If they don't know, they may inaccurately make up stories in their own head around our feelings toward them. Remember, they care. It probably hurts them more not knowing how to show up for us. We can ask ourselves, would we want them going through what we are going through alone and keeping it from us if the situation was reversed? Three, when it's affecting our work. Most of us are pretty hesitant to talk about our personal stuff at work for fear of it affecting the perception of our work or our position. However, if we're feeling in a tough spot mentally and it is affecting our enthusiasm or performance, telling a colleague or our boss a few details about it can be super helpful. It will give them a better understanding of the situation. And so instead of them making assumptions like, oh, perhaps John is bored with his project or Jane seems annoyed a lot lately, maybe I've done something to upset her. They can find out a few facts from us that help give them a more accurate view. Plus, they can probably then work with us to accommodate our needs for a certain period of time and help to lighten the load. We don't have to share every detail. Just outlining a few of the most significant factors will help. Four, when we're unsafe or in a crisis. If we ever find ourselves in critical distress, engaging in acts of self-harm or having thoughts of suicide then right now is the right time to reach out. In that moment, we wanna pick up the phone and call a helpline or go to emergency services. Go to a friend or family member's house. Ask a friend to come over so we have company and can get it off our chest. If we're feeling unsafe or in a crisis, we can book an appointment with a professional so that we know we're going to get the assistance that we need. In a moment of distress, a temporary pain can feel like a permanent one, but we must remember this too shall pass. Here are a couple more tips to make sure that we can seize the moment with confidence. Planning ahead. It's important to be courteous and respectful of people's time and emotional bandwidth. We wanna make sure our listener is in the right frame of mind to be able to show up well for us. Before jumping straight in, it's good practice to make sure that that person is available and willing to chat. Book in time in advance by organizing a coffee catch up or a lunch, meeting up for a drink. This will increase the chance that when we have alone time with that person, that they don't have conflicting arrangements that require them to shoot off mid conversation. Request consent. Although it's good to lock in time ahead of schedule, sometimes planning a specific time isn't necessary or isn't possible. When we reach out organically or spontaneously, it's still helpful to set up a conversation by saying something like, 
do you have 10 minutes for a quick chat about something personal? With this approach, we're allowing for consent and respecting their boundaries. If they're busy or unavailable, we can try for another time. 